A century ago, 40 drivers raced in front of 80,000 patrons and the greatest spectacle in racing was born. It's no coincidence that the Indy 500 shares its centennial with Chevrolet. The Chevrolet brothers raced in the first Indy 500, which would lead them to launch their own line of cars later that year. Louis and Arthur, they ran at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1909 and 1910 when they were still employed by Buick. They were drivers and engineers for Buick. And in fact, by the time the first 500 had rolled around, Louis Chevrolet was actually parked by David Dunbar Buick because he was too valuable as an engineer. And uh, so Arthur drove one of the cars in the 1911 500 and Louis was to stand by as a relief driver, but he didn't actually drive in his first 500 until 1915. The relationship of Chevrolet and the Brickyard has blossomed since their shared inception. The Indy 500 introduced the pace car to auto racing and Chevrolet has paced more 500s than any other brand. This car looks a lot like the 69 pace car, which brings back a lot of good memories. Because in 69, I sit on a pole here, was hoping to win that car, but Mario did. For Chevrolet, the importance of racing goes beyond the racetrack and into the showroom. 2012 IndyCar rule set is very exciting because all the technologies in the engine rule set for the series are exactly the technologies we need to make our cars more fuel efficient with lower greenhouse gas emissions. And those technologies are technologies we use in many of the production cars today, like the Cruise and the Sonic. So it's really a win-win. Learn on the racetrack. Goodyear makes a move! Little Al wins! Make our production cars better. Next year, Chevrolet will return to its roots, racing in the IndyCar series. And for collectors, Chevy will produce 500 replicas of the 100th anniversary Camaro pace car. I'm Chris Hansen.